Hello and welcome to today's flight. Today is November 29, 2020. And today we're going to be doing some partial panel work. We're going to simulate a vacuum system failure, which is going to fail both the heading indicator and attitude indicator in the airplane. I'm going to cover those with placards. We won't be able to see them as we're flying along. And we're going to be on an IFR flight plan flying from Tacoma Narrows Airport to Olympia Regional. And what we're going to do is we're going to shoot, I picked a, what what I think is the most probably complicated approach while flying partial panel uh, into this airport. And that's gonna be the VOR Alpha. So what that's gonna call for is, if you look over here on Sky Vector, this is gonna be our departure airport here to Comaneros. I'm gonna be flying southwest uh, to Olympia, direct to the Olympia VOR. Okay, so let's take a look here at the approach plate. So we're gonna be coming from this direction, direct to the Olympia VOR. I'm gonna pick up this video right after this uh, briefing of the plate, somewhere right about here, a few miles out uh, outside of the Olympia VOR. I'm gonna fly direct to the Olympia VOR, which calls for a course reversal right here in this holding pattern. So we're gonna make a left turn when we intercept the, the 171 radial off the Olympia VOR. I'm gonna make a left turn here, time that for one minute, and then we're gonna make an inbound turn, 225 degrees, re-intercept that radial and fly it inbound on the 356 heading, and then when we reach 5.1 DME, this procedure requires DME as indicated up here. And once we reach 5.1 DME, we're gonna time for one minute outbound. Then we're gonna make a 225 degree left turn, intercept the 171 radial inbound. And when we cross the Olympia VOR, uh, uh, correction, the Olympia 5.1 DME right here, we're gonna be at 2,700 feet. We're gonna immediately begin our descent down to 880 feet, which down here is the minimum for circling going to try to make that straight in for a landing. So here's the, the challenge. We're not going to have a heading indicator. So these turns to, to different headings are going to be made, um, initially going to be using the turn coordinator, which is a, if, if you are in a standard rate turn for two minutes, that's 360 degrees. So every 15 seconds is 45 degrees. So my plan then is once we intercept this radial and fly at one minute outbound, is to make a right turn one minute and 15 seconds, right? That should give us 225 degrees to re-intercept this radial. Of course, we're gonna be referencing our compass as well. And then uh, we, we do have DME in the airplane. So again, at 5.1 DME, one minute outbound, and then we're gonna do the same thing, a one minute and 15 second left turn, intercept the radial inbound, and let's see how it goes. Now, the reason I'm, I'm practicing this approach and I'm gonna be equipped, and I'll show you here in a minute how I'm gonna be equipped, is because in the, the real R plane, I am uh, slant alpha, which is, um, I have dual VORs, it's IFR certified and uh, with DME, but I, I, I do not have a certified GPS, so I, I can't technically make a GPS approach. However, I'm gonna show you in the airplane, I have two backup systems to my vacuum system, and, but they're not certified. So one of them is for flight, the uh, attitude and heading reference system, which I'll show you, which is what I would immediately go to if I had a vacuum system failure. And the other is uh, a Garmin uh, GPS, a 560, uh, which is independent of the ForeFlight. It has its own GPS antenna, and that also would will be able to provide the, the attitude and heading reference backup. So there's two backups. Now, even though they're not certified, I certainly would use them in an emergency, and, uh, and so, but, for this flight, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna fly solely by navigation radio. And the only thing I'm gonna have on my GPS, you'll see it, the, the simulator GPS is only going to have the Olympia VOR and that's just for DME purposes. Okay, so this approach calls for, again, 171 radial inbound from the Haber, from the Haber waypoint right here, which is 5.1 DME from the Olympia VOR at 2,700, and we're gonna descend down to 880 feet. Missed approach would call for a climb to 4,200 on the Olympia 171 radio, which we're already gonna have tuned in, to the Zimbu uh, waypoint right here, which is 4.8 DME, and then you would turn direct to the VOR and hold in the same holding pattern that we entered, but we basically entered this procedure. And uh, you would hold there and continue in the, the hold to 4,200. Okay, so that's, that's the missed approach. 
Uh, we're not planning on doing that. This is solely to practice partial panel, which, by the way, you have to do that in the instrument training, but, but many, if not most, uh, do not practice it outside of their instrument training, and you get yourself into trouble. There's a good AOPA video on a, uh, an air accident that occurred. It was an airline transport pilot certified uh, uh, pilot with over 15,000 hours and he got into trouble in his general aviation airplane he had with his partial panel and became disoriented and resulted in airplane crash and fatality. So regardless of how much flying experience you have, if you don't practice partial panel, uh, it could bite you in an emergency. Okay, let's jump inside the airplane. Again, I'm gonna pick it up a few miles outside of the VOR in the interest of time, and then we're gonna fail those instruments and, uh, and execute the procedure. Okay, we're in the air and tracking the 200 radial inbound to the Olympia VOR. And as you can see down here, if you look at the GPS, and again, that's the only purpose I'm using the onboard GPS for is DME. We're 13.6 out from the OLM VOR. I'm gonna go ahead and fail these instruments. Now in this airplane, you can just click on them and make them inoperative. So I've done that. And then these little, these little pieces of uh, notepad or sticky notes indicate what instrument you should be using in the absence of the instrument that's covered. So in this case, your heading indicator is covered, so it says use compass. And in this case, the attitude indicator is covered, so it says use turn coordinator and compass. So we're doing that right now. We're maintaining wings level by looking at the turn coordinator down here. And right now I'm tracking, again, the 200 radial inbound, but you won't be able to see VOR number two I've got mounted on the yoke. It's a SciTech ProFlight instrument. Um, so that's gonna be out of your view throughout the flight, but I'm gonna be flip-flopping between both VOR number one and two in different phases of the flight. Okay, so we're 12.3 out. I wanna show you really quickly what I would do in the case of a vacuum failure in the airplane, because I've got four flight and I've got an iPad mounted on the yoke. What I would do is bring up, I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you here. This is our AHARS. So what I would be doing right now is I'd be flying using the AHARS, which gives you all the information that all of your panel instruments would be providing. So right now, as you can see, it's a attitude indicator. I've got my heading, I've got ground speed, GPS altitude, so a whole host of various pieces of information being provided by the AHAR, so that's what I would be using. But for the purpose of this flight, I'm not going to use that. And again, as another backup, you won't be able to see it in the uh, simulation, but I've got a Garmin 560 also mounted on the panel, and that serves as a backup to the iPad. It's got its own independent GPS antenna and power source. So again, as I fly this, I'm not making any reference to my iPad. Right now we have center CDI deflection on VOR number two, tracking the 200 radial inbound. We are 10.4 out. And as soon as I reach the station, I'm gonna make a left turn to heading 171, which is our outbound course. That's going, that's preset right here in VOR number one. So we'll be tracking this radial. And once we get a CDI centered on that, we're gonna start the stopwatch. Let's go ahead and flip over to stopwatch. And we're going to time it for one minute, and then we're going to make a right turn and intercept the inbound 171 radial on heading 356. The way we're going to do that, as I said earlier, is we're going to time our turn for one minute and 15 seconds, which should give us a 225 degree turn to intercept the radial, and then we'll make our left turn for the inbound course to the Haber intersection. When all is said and done, we're going to review on four flight. We'll look at our ground track and see how well we did. I'm going to come slightly right here. Again, all the corrections that I make are going to be very, very gentle, if you will, to avoid making any kinds of over-corrections. So I just made a very slight turn to the right because the CDI on VOR number two is deflected slightly to the right, so we're just a little bit left of the course. So I'm making reference to my compass that's showing a heading of 210. There's some winds, it appears, that are coming uh, from the right and pushing us a little bit, so I'm having to hold about 10 degrees to the right, of course, for wind correction. Now, in a real airplane, obviously, you're not going to have these stickers over the instrument.
instruments. What's going to happen in a vacuum failure is you're going to have a gradual degrading of the heading indicator and attitude indicator. You need to be able to recognize that soon enough where you can transition to the alternate instruments and complete your flight safely. So in this case, we're covering them up. We know they're failed. We know it right away, so we can transition to the other instruments immediately. Okay, we have good centered on the CDI for VOR number two. Just gonna come a little bit left. I'm starting to see it swing from center to left, indicating that we're going, we're heading to the right of our course. Again, all these corrections are very gentle. You might've seen the turn coordinator move just ever so slightly. We're 6.8 out, 6.8 out now from the Olympia VOR. All right, looking good there, and we're showing a heading of about 205. Looks like 205 is sufficient wind correction angle. Right at the station, you're going to see this rapidly swing, indicating a from, and then we're going to turn left to 171, maybe slightly to the inside of 171 to re-intercept it in time our outbound. Okay, good deflection on the OR number two. Looks like we're showing 200 up there on the compass. I'm going to come right just a little bit because I know that wind's going to want to push us. So all my information now, again, is coming from the turn coordinator right here, looking at our altimeter, looking at our airspeed indicator, listening for engine RPMs. Of course, we're watching our VOR. Monitoring the, the uh, tachometer over here. So all the instruments in the absence of the heading and attitude indicator. Four point four out. 205 looks like it's doing it for us. CDI is staying dead on. On VOR number two. Okay, <clears throat> so the view that you're looking at right now is my, my IFR uh, panel view, so you can't see outside the windscreen, which is what I use for my instrument training. Of course, the weather right now probably is IMC anyway. Okay, 3.2 out, still looking good on VOR number two. So we're gonna be uh, intercepting the outbound course on a 30 degree intercept angle. just a tad, so we're going to come right. Again, I'm not going to make any major corrections here as we get close to the station, otherwise we'll be chasing the CDI all over the place. Just going to hold that right there. Coming right just a little bit more, the CDI started to flex a little bit more to the right. These are very gentle corrections. Looks like about 210, we're gonna hold that. Watch the altitude there, we're gonna make a correction for that. <coughs> CDI is starting to center, 1.4 out. It's gonna hold what I have, no more corrections.
171. More than 171. Expect you to intercept that. There it comes. Gonna roll out right there. And gonna start our clock. Oh, one minute. Keep an eye on that CDI. Looks like our compass is showing about 165. Let's come right just a little bit. Thank goodness for the the honeycomb yoke really does play a significant role here when my, making these very minor corrections because the sensitivity is significantly better than what I was using before, which is the side tech yoke. Okay, we're looking good on the outbound. Now I'm going to set my V1 over to you. You'll be able to see this, but I'm going to set that for the inbound course of 351 degrees. And when we make our course reversal, that's what we're going to be tracking. I'm going to come right just slightly. We are at 47 seconds, almost ready to make our right turn. So that's going to be 1 minute and 15 seconds once we make our turn. 2.2 <coughs> miles from the station, 2.3. And there's 1 minute. So let's make a standard rate turn to the right. Reset the clock. And make that turn for 1 minute and 15 seconds. Now it's going to be really important that I hold that turn coordinator on standard rate dead on, which is about 17 degree bank angle, uh, because we're timing the turns to become increasingly important to be very accurate on those turns. Watching the altitude, making any corrections as necessary. So remember every 15 seconds on a standard rate turn speed 45 degrees. So 1 minute 15 is 225 degrees. That'll allow us to intercept the inbound course of 351 on the 171 radio. There's 50 seconds. 55. There's a minute. seconds. Reset this. Stop launch. Now hold that. Now we have reverse sensing here, right, because that's our inbound course of 171. I've got VOR number 2 set for 351. Look for that to come in. We should be on a 45 degree intercept angle right now. Wings are level. That's starting to come in. So we're going to make a 15 second turn to the left. 2, 1,000. 3, 1,000. 4, 1,000. Seconds. We're going to look up at the compass and see what we have. Looking for 3.56. So we need to come left a little bit more. Next thing we're going to look for is 5.1 DME. That means we're going to be at the Haber intersection. That CDI is coming in nicely. Showing about 340. I'm just going to come looking at the magnetic compass there. I'm going to come slightly right, just a little bit. 
Okay, now we're looking for 5.1 Haber intersection, then we're going to time one minute outbound, then standard rate turn to the left, one minute, 15 seconds, and intercept the 171 inbound. So now we're at 4,000, we're going to begin our descent at the Haber intersection, down to 3,000 outbound, and then when we make our procedure turn inbound, we're going to descend to 2,700 and hold that to the Haber intersection. That's again, I'm looking over here at the chart. Just a little bit here. We've got to get that CDI back in. When we look at our ground track, we're going to show that we're slightly left of course here. In that direction now. Okay, it's starting to come in. So let's hold that. Showing 350 on the magnetic compass. Just going to hold this. 1.3 down there, we're looking at the DME. Looking for sensing up here on VOR number one. Setting the clock. And a minute and 
15. Still descending to 3,000. And on the inbound, we'll continue our descent down to 2,700 and hold that. No, 5.1, we're going to go down to 880. 880 feet, there's 5.1. We're going to begin our descent down to 880. We're going to come left a little bit to intercept that VOR radial. Alright, let's hold that. Right, I know that's going to start swinging. So we're showing 150. We're going to come right a little bit. Looking up at the compass. Looking for 171. Flaps one. Come right just a little bit. Showing about 175 on the magnetic compass, looking for the CDI to come in. Okay, we'll hold what we got. Look good on airspeed. I'm gonna reduce that sink rate just a little bit. It's good to get down quicker on this VOR Alpha approach because it uh, it can put you pretty high above the runway if your if your descent rate is insufficient. All right, looking good. The CDIs eh, we're holding about 175. It looks like on the magnetic compass. 880 is the magic number. Two mile final runway 17. Rates good, airspeeds good. I'm going to reduce the power just a little bit. I'm going to reduce that airspeed a tad here. And once we get clear of the runway, we'll take a look at our ground track on the full flight. Okay, 
final flaps. Airspeed's good at 80. Once we get further than one, we'll take a we'll flight and see what our ground track looks like. Okay, we'll stop it right there. down okay so there's our departure from Tacoma Narrows and this is the Narrows I flew the Narrows one departure which is a 250 a climb to 1500 on runway heading then right turn to 250 um, continued my climb and this is about where I intercepted the 200 radial inbound to the VOR so I followed that track that's about 200 radial or it should be okay so we Followed that inbound to the station, and then when we reached the station, uh, this is our outbound right here. We turned left to 171, and uh, we started tracking VOR number one. And after one minute, we made a right turn 225 degrees, which was timed at one minute and 15 seconds, and then intercepted the inbound course. And so here's our, here's our inbound. So overshot just a little bit, came back, running a little bit left of course started to slowly correct in back into the uh, radial. And then at uh, Haber intersection, which is right here, Haber, uh, which is identified by 5.1 DME, that's where we timed for one minute outbound. And then we made a left turn, timed that for one minute and 15 seconds, and intercepted the inbound course of 171. And we came to, about when we rolled out is about when we hit Haber, uh, if I recall correctly. So I immediately began uh, my descent down to the minimum descent altitude of 880 feet. So we're descending here down to 880 and tracking the VOR 171 radial inbound and then to a landing. So that is flying the VOR Alpha procedure with a, a full loss of vacuum instruments. And, okay, so let's go ahead and clear this out of the way. And flying only by navigation radials, flying by hand, and without a attitude indicator or heading indicator. So we compensated by using our turn coordinator to maintain wings level and um, our compass for heading changes. And of course, the, the stopwatch came in real handy. Timing the turns uh, really worked out very well. So that's uh, flying partial panel with the loss of vacuum instruments. 
Thanks for joining me today, and I hope to see you again next flight.